Hey there, everybody. Merry Christmas. Now we can, what? I know Christmas is next Saturday, but I don't know who I'll be making another video by that time. Now we, what? Why not? Because I'll be spending time with my family. Anyway, I remember a week or so ago, I went to a sandwich shop and had a Philly cheesesteak, and that sandwich tasted mm, okay. Then I got to thinking, you know, I made a lot of Philly cheesesteak inspired recipe videos. Like, you know, the vegan Philly cheesesteak lasagna, I can still get a lot of requests for that. But I haven't really actually made a traditional Philly cheesesteak, so I think I'll do that right now. Made out of chicken. And I think I will dedicate this video to two of my friends, my friend BC and my friend Coco. So let's play. Tell them that those are cool nicknames. Okay, out. Are those nicknames or are those their real names? I never actually asked them. Hmm. Oh well, let's get started. So by now you should be familiar with our chicken breasts. Have one and a half chicken breasts here. Might seem a little bit more because this one looks a little bigger. But I'm still using one and a half. What I'm about to do is throw it into our handy dandy 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. And then what? Why one and a half breasts? Well, it's because it's an 8 inch sub roll and one chicken breast seems like it wouldn't be quite enough and two chicken breasts seem like it would be too many. But if you want to use two chicken breasts, just bake it for 35 minutes instead of 30 minutes. Now, I'm going to throw it into the what? Why aren't you slow cooking them instead? You know, that's a subject of debate. You know, when you see a Philly cheesesteak, like a traditional Philly cheesesteak made with steak, the steak is usually shredded, but when you use another protein like chicken, I've seen it shredded, I've seen it chopped. So if you're shredding it, yes, true, you should put it in a slow cooker, but I prefer it to be chopped, so I will throw this into the oven. I mean, if it's shredded, I'd still eat it. But another thing we're going to have to do is, speaking of tradition, you know, I'm going to a few sandwich shops and whenever they have a Philly cheesesteak, they put tomato sauce on it and that doesn't taste bad by any means, but traditionally you don't use tomato sauce on a Philly cheesesteak, you actually use cheese sauce. But when it comes to sauce on a sandwich like cheese sauce, I think that's a little messy. So you know what I'm about to use? Yeah, you recognize this, right? You don't? It's my cheese bread. It. Oh, you're probably used to seeing my farmer's cheese bread. Yeah, I do usually use farmer's cheese bread in spread for sandwiches, but I'm trying to stay as close to tradition as I can. So instead, I'm using marble jack cheese. And what? That doesn't look like marble jack. It looks like Mexican cheese blend. You can really tell that? Okay, I'll admit it. Uh, the store that I go to, they were kind of out of Marble Jack, so I use Mexican cheese blend. But you can still use Marble Jack or Farmer Cheese for that matter. Oh, and one other thing, I'm going to add some other toppings to it. I'm going to add some onions and green bell peppers. I'm going to fry that up in some vegetable oil. That's not even going to take two minutes. Oh, I better add some mushrooms to this too, because I have to put mushrooms. Oh, wait, wait, actually, somebody's paging me. Paging me? How old am I? Anyway, uh, let's see what this is. Oh, it's Coco. Uh, let's see. And you better not put any of those mother... F oh, that's right. Coco doesn't like mushrooms on their cheesesteaks. Well, we can leave those out. Oh, and uh, I've been talking about cheesesteaks for a while. I'm talking about, like, the rolls and everything. I haven't actually shown you the roll. See, I really want to show the roll before I cook it or while I cook it, that is, because I like to get a little toasty, and there's a certain way you should do that. In fact, let me show you. See, after buttering up the bread, you want to fry it on medium-high heat, of course, just like this. Put it flat like that, but make sure, you'll notice that the sub roll is still intact. You want to keep it intact, it just, well, I just think it looks better that way. And you want to fry that for mm, about three to three and a half minutes. So now we have our chicken all mixed in with our onions and peppers. But we have to add it, of course, to our sub roll, our toasted sub roll, that is. 
Okay, I think we're now in business. See, at the bottom we have some, you can't really see it, but there's some whipped dressing down there, or mayo if you prefer. And then there's some spinach. I know in the recipe I did write down lettuce, but I prefer spinach. I mean, you can still use lettuce. There's some tomato, the chicken mixture, of course, and the cheese spread. Now, I could just close it up and eat this as is, but what? There's no way it's gonna close correctly with all that on there. Yeah, you have a point. Well, I still like the way this looks for presentation purposes. Anyway, I could eat it as is, but I like to get the sandwich a little toastier and the cheese a little meltier. So, meltier, is that a word? Anyway, gotta throw it back into the oven for three minutes. That is more like it. And this time, I already have the napkin and water bottle on hand. Now then. Excuse me, delicious is an understatement. Get mm, tastiness, deliciousness, and I just said delicious, didn't I? Well, that tells you how good it tastes. And this will stand up to any other sandwich you would get in any other sub place. And I'm sure that what? A cheesesteak isn't really a sub. I don't see why it isn't. I mean, it's served on a sub roll, isn't it? Of course, I'd probably get kicked out of Philly if I said that. Although I've never been to Philly or Pennsylvania for that matter. Anyway, I'm sure BC and Coco would enjoy this too. That is going to do it. And of course you know by now where to find the recipe. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again soon. And have a merry- What? How about some cheesecake for dessert? Mm, I don't know. I don't really like making cheesecake. I couldn't even say that with a straight face. Now, let's- uh, Hmm, what kind should I make? I should, oh I know, how about some caramel apple special cheesecake? Why don't we just, what? Don't you already have two videos for that? I do have two videos for that already. The thing is, I made the video a second time because I forgot I made it the first time. But I'm doing it a third time because as what happened with a lot of recipes, they have, well, the recipe for this one evolved a little bit. See, back then, I didn't use salted caramel buttercream inside of cream cheese icing. Back then, I didn't caramelize the apple before putting them into the cheesecake. Back then, I... Actually, that's it. Anyway, this is the new improved apple cheesecake. And well, you can't really tell by looking at it that the apples are caramelized, but you'll be able to tell once you taste it. Plus, I told you they were caramelized. Also, here is the salted caramel cream cheese buttercream. Wait, it's called a salted caramel buttercream cream cheese icing. That really is a mouthful, but that's what it is. And you've already seen this while I'll show it to you again because it's here. Caramel cake. Now, doesn't this look like an amazing spark of deliciousness? Hey, that was like a great green card slogan. Hell no. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh well. Deliciously creamy, full of apples and delicious caramel flavor, which makes it an amazing spark of deliciousness. Oh, come on. This sounded good, didn't it? Mm. Anyway, BC and Coco should enjoy this as well. Now, that's going to do it. And of course, you know by now, you look right down there if you want to order a cheesecake or if you want the recipe to the cheese steak. Cheesecake and cheese steak. That can get kind of confusing, can't it? Well, thanks for being with me. I'll see you again soon and happy holidays.